Hi everyone and welcome to my second design and knit tutorial where we're going to work with some stitch designer stuff. I thought today that I wouldn't structure this lesson too much and we're just going to have a play because I feel that playing with the software is the best way for you to learn how it works, how you can do things. So what I've done is I've just opened stitch designer with the little tab here and I'm going to create a new stitch file for this lesson. So we're going to go file new pattern set up, we're going to set size manually and we're going to make it 40 by 40 which is the default okay then we're going to um we're going to leave it on the default pattern palette for now and we're going to click ok all right and then we're going to click ok again because we're going to keep our tensions the same from the last lesson so what we're going to do today is we're going to work with the stitch designer and we're going to sh I'm going to show you some of the tools and things you can do with it. Now, I always make mistakes and I have to go back and fix my mistakes. So I'm not going to edit out my mistakes or when I have trouble because I think that you seeing that will make life easier for you because you can see how I correct the mistake. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open a stitch pattern. What I've done is I've gone to machine knitting etc and I've downloaded the design and knit files for the brother stitch world. You can just go to machine knitting etc and then type in the little box, search box and just write design and it. You can flick through and find stitch world for design and knit files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open those files. So I'm going to click this little, we'll go back there. I'm going to click this little open here. You can go file open and it'll open a dialog box without thumbnails, but I like using this one because it's got the thumbnails. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with stitch pattern 40 from Brother Stitch World that I downloaded from Machine Knitting, etc. So as you can see, you can see the numbers. So this is pattern 40, and this is a pattern I quite like. Okay, so it's imported it into Design Knit, and it's showing me four repeats of the pattern, okay? So you can see one, two, three, four repeats. And up here, you've got information about the pattern. So what it's saying here is it's 14 stitches by 22 rows. The, the knitting method is F for ferrule. You've got your tensions here and you've got your machine set up here. So I'm set up for my brother 965i because that's the machine I use most at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go options, method of knitting. And this here allows us to change how we want to knit the garment. So for this pattern here, it's a ferrule pattern. So ferrule is with floats on the back, but you can set it to knit with intarsia. You can set it to knit with two color jacquard. You can set it to, um, well you can't because these patterns here are not acceptable with this stitch pattern because we've got too many stitches together. So if we put this on right side facing textures, which is tuck, um, we wouldn't be able to tuck this pattern because the machine wouldn't be able to handle it because you never want more than one tuck on its own. You can do two sometimes, but it's preferable to just have one tuck at a time. Okay, so we've seen that. Now, I'm going to keep this on Feral today, but you can also click on Setup and you can change the way things happen. So you can tell Design Init that you're using a color changer. You can... Um, Tell it to start a swatch if color change is not used. You can, um, more than tension, four tension wires are available, so that means you've got more than one mast, more than two masts actually. Um, end needle selection, so that's when the end needles select. You can use automatic motor control, so if you've got a machine that can handle um, a motor, you can, um, you can use this with the PASAP E8000, I'm pretty sure. But I'm not sure of other machines. Some divide machines, that sort of thing, might be able to do it, but I'm not sure about those. So you can have a look at your card here. If we were knitting your card, see this button here, your card. If we were knitting your card, which is bird's eye, striped back, double bed your card, all those sorts of things, you can actually see how design and it's going to lay out the pattern. Some machines require more rows between for setup rows. So as you can see, this one here has got no setup rows between. But this one here has got setup rows in between, but we don't need that today because we're working with Feral. You can click on this template button and it's going to show you how, it's going to give you the settings for making a punch card or a pattern reader card for machines that have got mylar or um, 
some of the old ones that use the um, light box. So, click OK. We can have a look um, here where it's got our cables for how we want to send to the machine. And we're going to click OK because we've seen in there. Now, I'm going to click OK here again. And we're back here at our pattern file. So in this pattern file, I'm going to look at one repeat. So what I'm going to do is instead of looking at four repeats, I want to look at one. So I'm going to click view, repeats, and I'm going to click one horizontally and one vertically. And click OK. So now you can see we've got one repeat of our stitch pattern. Now we've got our palette here. Okay, so it's got the colours that are in our garment. So we've got red and blue, which is in our garment. So if we wanted to change the stitch pattern, we need to select the colours we want to use. So if I left click on this red one here for the foreground colour and I right click on this blue one here, it means when I'm painting or drawing, when I left click with my mouse, it's going to go in red. And when I right click, it's going to go in blue. And when I click the center mouse button, it's going to go in orange. But we're not using orange today. But if I wanted to change these colors, it's quite easy. You just double click on them and it will give you the options to adjust the color. So you can add more or less of each unit. You can also click on, uh, which one is it? Yarn color palette. Symbols. Uh, I've got to find the little oh, import. So you can import palette files if you export palette files. So if you're adding more colors here by um, just got to find it. I see I'm forever having to play around because I my short term memory is not the best. Um, let's see how we do this. Oh, okay, we're going to go palettes, yarn color setup. That's how we do it. Sorry about that. So if we go, if we want to change the colors we've got in here, we can go palettes, yarn color setup. There's another software that's a knitting software that I use as well. Um, and it has a little button up here to change your palette. So I've gotten a bit confused. So if you want to add colors or change colors to your palette, what you can do is you can click in these little boxes. Okay, so I'm going to click in this one and I want to add purple because I like purple. So we're going to add a purple. I'm going to click OK. So, oops, you can color set up. Sorry, we're going to do that again. We're going to add the, we're going to pick the purple. I'm going to make it a bit lighter. I'm gonna, I think we click apply color here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Instead of clicking OK, we've got to click apply color. And then we're going to go OK. So now if I right click on this one here, this color, what's going to happen is when I click this pencil tool or the paintbrush tool or the eraser tool, OK, so when I click on this pencil tool here, it will draw one stitch at a time. So if I... Um, right click here on this stitch, it's going to turn it purple. If I left click, it's going to turn it blue. Okay, sorry about that interruption. I just got interrupted, so I had to stop the video and start again. So where we were was we are saying that we've, got, we've clicked on the blue with the left button. We can see over here that with our left mouse button, we're using blue. And with our right mouse button, we're using purple. And with our center mouse button, we're using orange. Okay, but I'm going to change this center mouse button to red because these are the three colors we're working in, okay? So what we can do with the pencil tool, we can left, uh, left click will make the unit blue, middle mouse button will make it red, and right mouse button will make it purple. So we're gonna make it blue again. Now, if we were working on this, it's all well and good to work on one repeat. But if you're going to repeat this pattern several times across the garment you, and you want to see what the whole repeat is going to look like, what we can do is we can go view, 
repeats and we can select the amount of repeats we want to view. So if I'm going to, I'm going to view five repeats horizontally and five repeats vertically. Okay. So we're going to click OK. And as you can see, we've brought up five by five repeats. So I'm going to zoom in with my mouse wheel, of course. And I'm going to use this little scroll bar to scroll down. And we're going to work on this little box here. Now, as you can see, we can, we've got our pattern repeated. So we can work in any box we want. And the pattern will be duplicated to the other boxes. So the other repeats. So whenever we're working on this one repeat, it's always going to duplicate the actions we make in all the other repeats. So I'm going to use my right mouse button. And I've got my pencil still selected. I'm going to select these two here and make them purple. All right. So as you can see, because I've made them purple, they're purple everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to use my center mouse button now. And I'm going to make this one, this one, this one, and this one red. Okay. And I'm going to use my right mouse button. I'm going to click and drag. And I can make those all purple. And when we zoom out you'll be able to see that the changes were made everywhere. So now that this is no longer two color ferrile, it's um, either three color ferrile or three color jacquard. This pattern really won't work very well with three, three color ferrile because th their colors are in the same row. So you've got three colors in the same row. So unless you can set your machine to slip, which some of the singer machines can't do, you can't really do color ferrule and when you're slipping stitches it's not ferrule anyway it's jacquard even if it's single bed jacquard so that's basics on how we can work with the pattern and repeats now a lot of people want to know how to put this on their garment piece okay so what we've done is we're going to use the garment piece from our previous tutorial and we're going to make this into an all-over pattern but first we're going to go file save and we've saved this as brother pattern 40. And as you can see now, it's given us an error, which is a great thing because it's telling us stitch pattern cannot be used for ferrile because there's more than two colors in a row. So we need to check the row colors, but we're gonna cancel this anyway. And we're gonna go options, method of knitting, and we're gonna make this three colors your card, okay? And okay. As you can see, our edited file will now save correctly. But we're going to go File, New Pattern Setup, No. And we're going to um, click OK here to make our new 40 by 40 pattern. Click OK again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to import our garment shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Shapes, View Pieces. I'm going to click front. I already have the garment open, okay, because I had the open the garment open in original pattern drafting, and then I clicked on stitch designer. If you don't, the software will prompt you to choose the garment, the, the shape files that you want to use. So I'm going to click on front because I want to work on the front of the garment, and I'm going to click OK. All right. So now, as you can see, we've got our repeats. So the pattern will re be repeated over the whole garment piece. What a lot of people don't know how to do is how to make single motifs on here or make borders across or a block of stitches. So what we can do is we can click File, New Pattern Setup, I'm going to click No, and then what we can do is we can click Set Size from a pattern piece, and then we can click Front, okay? So this is going to tell Designer Knit to make a stitch pattern file that will fit the whole front of the garment in, in one pattern, okay? In one stitch pattern file. But up here, we can change our knitting method. So I want to knit this sweater in Ferrile. Whoops. I want to knit the sweater in Ferrile, so I'm going to click OK. And then what I'm going to do is click OK again and OK again, because you would have already done um, your tensions in original pattern drafting in the previous tutorial. But what we're going to have to do is when we design our stitch file, you're going to need to knit, because 
changing the stitch pattern file will change the gauge or the tensions. So once you've done your stitch pattern file, you're going to have to knit a swatch. So you can remeasure and put them back in here, okay? So I'm going to click OK. And Designer Knit has made us a, a stitch pattern file that fits the whole front of the garment, okay? So what I want to do is I want to put... Um, I want to put a stitch pattern file that fills the neck, that kind of imitates a square yoke. Okay, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go edit, instead of going to our open here, because if we open, it's always going to make it fill the garment with repeats, but we don't want to do that. We want to import and put them onto this garment file. So what we're going to do is we're going to click edit, import, single motif. Okay, so this is the single motif. So we're just going to select one of these Stitch World files. It doesn't matter which one. But for a single motif, you want to select something that works as a single motif. Here we go. We're going to use this ice cream cone. Okay, so we're going to click on that. And then click OK. And as you can see, we've got our ice cream cone. And it's got dotted lines around it. Oops, we're going to move up here. Now... Before we go any further, I forgot to tell you about how you can change the views of what you're looking at. So up here, we've got options to change how we look at what we're working on. So we can look at the, the knitting as if it's knit stitches, or we can click on this and it'll take that away, and we can click on the grid, and we can put our grid on and off. You can view your yarn colours or you can view stitch symbols. So I'm going to turn, as you can see, if I turn stitch symbols off, it's going to remove it from my palette. Now, I can drag this here into the center of my garment like this. Okay, and that will knit as a single motif. But I don't know that that's even and level. Okay, so I can move this up and down freehand. As you can see there, I lost selection of the box. So if we click on this little box here, it'll bring us back and we can move this around again. So we click on this little show untag selection box and we can move it. All right. So if I want to see exactly where this is, like we were doing with the Cartesian coordinates, I can click view. We can come down here and we can find, and let me find it. Um, selection box position okay so what it's going to do now is it's going to show us exactly where our selection box is and what size our selection box is so we can move this down yeah see that happens a lot and I'm not sure why but if you click on this one it put it back around the file and you should be able to move it. See, I'm not sure why it does that. And now, because see how I moved that now, I've cut off part of the stitch pattern. So I'm going to go control Z, 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 and I've got this back again, as you can see. So I'm going to just put this anywhere haphazardly, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put it here so it'd be on the breastplate okay now this is fine we've got a single motive but what if we want a straight line of several motives across the front um you really need to calculate the repeats you need to find out how many repeats you got across the garment you need to find out the width of your garment and all those sorts of things so if you go here you can find uh, which one is it um, I might go view, info, that's how we do it. And what it'll do is it'll show us your stitches and rows that you've got to work with. So if you want a pattern to fit directly across the garment so it matches side to side, we're working with 170 stitches wide. So if we've got a stitch pattern, we can go and go file, import, and we can go um, horizontal border, which means it'll put a tile of the horizontal patterns across the um, garment. We can see here that it tells us how wide our pattern is. 
So this here is 25, 24 stitches by 30 rows, which is half the size of a standard gauge punch card. But we need to work out if that's going to fit. So how I do this is I open my calculator and I've got 170 stitches wide. Okay, I'm going to delete that by pressing the S key. And I'm going to put 24 plus 24 and then I'm going to hit the enter key until I get the closest I possibly can to 170, but I went too fast, so I'm going to 24 plus 24. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so that tells you how many times you press enter will tell you how many repeats you can fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 24, put 24 in again. I'm going to plus 24. And that's one enter, two enters, three enters, four enters, five enters, six enters, which means we can get six repeats across vertic, uh, six repeats across horizontally. So if we click on this pattern now, and click OK. As you can see, it's brought that pattern in, and I'm going to click on the center, the center white square, and move it. So if we drag this across so that we're one stitch in from the edge on both sides like that it means that we've got a full repeat so when we put the back in we've got these extra sync whoops I need to go in one more I need to go in one more okay whoops control Z Oops, control Y, Y. We need to go, oops, control Y again. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Hopefully they, I read, I tried to read the manual and find out why it does it, but it doesn't. Control Z, Z. So I'm just going to go control Z again and just import it again. Edit. Import. Um, horizontal border. And we can choose the pattern again. I think that's it. It doesn't matter, it's still 24 stitches by 30 rows, but okay. Now we're gonna zoom in. Now, instead of zooming in, you can actually fit the garment piece to the window. Okay, so you can click. You can zoom into the selection bar. And you can zoom out so that all repeats are shown. Okay. Move down and we're going to move this border up. Um, I'm not sure how to do it or if even it could be done. But it would, would be really nice if we could put the coordinates in for the size of our selection box. So what I've done is I've come in, if I put the grid on. You can see I want to come in one stitch from the edge each side because our repeats equal one eight, um, one sixty eight. So now if I if I put that in the same place on my back piece by flipping my back piece and laying it over this one, you can keep the repeat going across. Now you can do the exact same thing with a vertical border. So you can go edit, import vertical border. Okay, you can do the exact same thing. Now, you can also work with motifs. So you've got this little last hoot tool that says drag a motif, leave original in place using control, stamp with shift and reflect with tab. Okay. So if I scroll down here a bit, zoom in, I can click on this lasso tool. Okay. And I can click on this cross here and I can move that motif out. So if I leave, and, and if I click control and then try, I can duplicate this motif. Okay, so you click on this and you can hold control and you can move it and it'll leave the individual in position. So that's really good if you're trying to make a, a tessellated pattern. You can hold shift and click on it and you can move it. And you can also use tab to move the motive, so it'll reflect the motive 
for you so it will change the orientation okay so as you can see this is not a very sti pretty stitch pattern because we're playing with it but you can also import a motif and manipulate the motif so we can click on this little guy here use a fill motif we can select one of these I'm going to select this one because it's very plain and click OK and I clicked on this to crop to see the window but I want to zoom in again and I'm going to use this by clicking the brush tool okay as you can see I've still got my use fill pattern for brush flood fill and text and when you click on that it opens the window and I chose what I want but now you can use these brushes here and when you brush like you're painting artwork it's going to put the stitch pattern under where your brush is so if I wanted to do a heart I can quickly do a heart with my mouse it's not a very good heart but I can really quickly make that into a field stitch pattern so um, that's another thing you can do with it now there's more complex actions like opening all garment pieces at the same time to line them up but I'm not going to go through that today because this is just a basics we might go through that in the next lesson and then we'll go through transferring this out of stitch designer to the machine but I hope this helps some of you I hope you get more out of it and happy knitting